Let's make a platformer. All right, now that you've learned how to set up the physics variables of your game, we can even change them during the game to make some awesome effects. We will just give you a few simple examples and let you run wild with your own ideas. Let's start by drawing some more map tiles to create different environments where the physics would naturally change. The physics will be normal on these grassy tiles, but how about we add some sandy tiles that could make it harder to run on? And I could go all out and make some kind of platforms to match this sand, but I'm going to keep it simple because this is just to give you some ideas. All right, looking good. Let's just make sure the right flags are set. Flag zero, we made for floors. Flag one, we set for ceilings. And let's use flag two for sand. Now there are only eight flags, so you might not want to use one whole flag for each ground type, but this is quick, simple, and doesn't need more code because we can use our map collision function to check for this flag. So now let's put the sand in the map. All right, that's a nice stretch of sandy ground. If we run the game now, the look of our level is the only thing that changed. And that's pretty cool, but let's go the extra mile to change the feel of the game too by changing the physics when we run on sand. And this is actually very easy. We'll do this at the very start of player update before we apply friction to the player DX. Let's first check if the player is standing on sand. If collide map, player, down, flag two, then let's make the friction stronger. So whatever friction is normally, we want to lower that decimal number. Since it's 0.85 here, I'll make friction set to 0.50 when on sand. Then we just set it back to normal if it's not sand. So else friction is 0.85. That's all there is to it. Let's try it out. Oh, wow. That is immediately harder to walk on. And I like how it feels going from grass to sand and back to grass. This adds so much to the feel of the game. It's really nice. And that was so easy, let's do another. This time I'll make an icy area. And of course, when you walk on ice, it's slippery, which means the friction is very weak. When I finish drawing, I'm going to be lazy again and just use another flag. It's just so easy. And even though I'm running out of flags, it's totally okay. Because what we love about Pico 8 is we can enjoy making simple and sweet games and not get stuck on one project forever adding to it. So we want to encourage you to make something and move on to the next one, building a whole variety of projects. Of course, you could enjoy the challenge of being ultra efficient and pack as much as you can inside of one Pico 8 game to become a master Pico 8 developer. But if you're just starting out, don't worry about these things too much and just enjoy getting better and learning new tricks with each game that you make and make a whole bunch. All right, let's add this to the map. Easy as that, let's add the code. So right where we are checking if the ground is sand, we can also check if the ground is ice like this. Else if collide map player down flag three, then the friction sets to 0 0.95. And let's test it out. I don't feel any difference, but watch what happens when I let go. That's what the weak friction did. Check this out. This is the normal sliding on grass. This is sliding on sand. And this is sliding on ice. How freaking cool is that? But you know what? I want ice to feel immediately different, even when you run on it like the sand does. Right now I'm running at full speed, which means our momentum, the DX, is hitting the speed limit. So even though friction is weaker here, the speed limit doesn't let us feel that. So let's increase the running speed limit, which is the player's max DX. Let's go back to the code where we check if the ground is ice. I really should add comments here so I know what flags two and three mean. Sand is flag two, ice is flag three, and these are the default physics settings. Now, if the ground is ice, we simply add 
player dot max dx now sets to what was it before? Okay, two. So then let's increase it to three. Just be careful changing your max speed because you might ice skate into a wall. So your map collision might also need adjusting. And of course, let's turn that back to normal if we run on grass again. Now let's see if that made a difference. That is sweet. The extra speed makes it a little harder to control, which is perfect on ice. There are so many things we can do with the physics to make interacting with the game world feel as amazing as it looks. Let's just do one more thing, because watch this. When I jump, the physics resets back to normal. That's actually not too bad for ice. You immediately slow down, and that kind of feels like you slip when you try to jump, and so you lose momentum, which makes sense. But jumping in sand should be just as hard as running in it. So I should definitely make this jump here weaker. So when we run on sand, let's change the player.boost to half of what it was. It is normally four, so let's make it two. And don't forget to set it back to the default. Let's check it out. How easy was this? We now have three different types of environments that look awesome and feel fantastic too. Have fun and get creative imagining all the different types of environments you could make and how they could affect the physics of your player's movement. We know you guys will make things from this that we wouldn't have ever thought of, so we can't wait to see what you all come up with. We are Nerdy Teachers. Ask a question or leave a suggestion in the comments. And by subscribing, you are telling us to keep making more.